Hello there everybody, and welcome to another album episode. Today is a very special album video because we're going to talk about two albums from the same movie. And the movie that we are going to be talking about today is Urban Cowboy. And we have this first album here, and then we have part two, which looks like this. We have a whole lot of information to talk about because this one opens up gate fold album here tons of different pictures to look at and I have some facts to read to you towards the end of the video so let's go ahead and get started if you've never seen this movie urban cowboy it's really really good starring John Travolta and the soundtrack, all the songs in this movie are really really good um, I've only seen this movie a few times but I love it it's one of my mom's favorite movies ever um, so I'm gonna go ahead and read all of these different musicians that are you know, that have a song on this soundtrack, and then on the back, it tells what songs they are. Okay? And I will put links to my favorite ones in the description if you want to check them out. So, the first one, the first name we have here at the top, is Jimmy Buffett. And I am a Jimmy Buffett fan, for sure. For sure. He has really, really good songs. I believe his bands are called Parrot Heads, so it's pretty cool. Okay, and I guess I'll read going down, and then we'll go over here, and then go down. So, the next one is Charlie Daniels Band. Um, the third one down is Eagles, and they have some really, really good music. Um, probably my top, one of my top. For sure. Um, let's see. Dan Vogelberg. Mickey Gilly. Gilly's Urban Cowboy Band. And Johnny Lee is the last one here. Okay, now going to the side and going down. Anne Murray. Bonnie Riot. Riot? Bonnie Riot. Um, Linda Rodstad. D. Souther, Kenny Rogers, and Boz Skaggs, Bob, C uh, Bob Seger and the Silver Bullet Band, and Joe Walsh. So, Urban Cowboy Original Motion Picture Soundtrack. And let's go ahead and trace this picture of John Travolta. flip it around before we open it up and take a look. That way I can read to you everything on the back. So there's no pictures on the back, it's just plain black and then white lettering, white, white words. So let's go ahead and see what this says. Alright, so the song by Jimmy Buffett is Hello Texas. Okay. The song by Charlie Daniels Band is Falling in Love for the Night, and The Devil Went Down to Georgia. Let's see, The Eagles, um, Lion Eyes, I love that song. Uh, let's see, Dan Fogelberg, Times Like These, Mickey Gilly, Stand By Me, and Here Comes the Hurt Again. one is Gilly's Urban Cowboy Band, and they did the Orange Blossom special hoedown. Okay, let's see. The next one, Johnny Lee, Looking for Love. I love that song. And Cherokee Fiddle. Let's see. Okay, the song by Anne Murray was Could I Have This, Could I Have This Dance? Um, Bonnie Raitt. Bonnie Riot? I'm sorry, I don't know how to pronounce the last name. Um, 
they did, darling, and don't it make you want to dance. Linda Ronstadt and J.D. Souther did Hearts Against the Wind. Kenny Rogers did Love the World Away. Boz Skaggs did Look What You've Done to Me. And let's see, a couple more here. We got Bob Seger and the Silver Bullet Band, and they did Nine Tonight. And Joe Walsh did All Night Long. That's a good one. Um, so those are all the songs on just this first one. There's a lot of music in this movie. That's why they had to have two albums. So, let's see. There's some things down below. Right here. It says, Original soundtrack album from the Paramount Picture starring John Travolta and Urban Cowboy. Irving Azoff, Robert Evans production, a James Bridges film. Screenplay by James Bridges and Aaron Latham. Produced by Irving Azoff and Robert Evans. Directed by James Bridges. Album executive producer was Irving, Irving Azoff. Album compiled by Irving Azoff, Howard Kaufman, and Becky Sharko. So, that's cool. The year on this is 1980. look at the sleeves really quick. Okay, so let's see. The sleeves, they do have a lot of writing on them, but they're pretty much just telling like who sung the songs and who played what instruments and things. So let me check on the other one and see, because this is a double, a double vinyl. The same thing right there. Just a bunch of information on who did vocals, uh, who published the song, who recorded the song, and things like that. So, I'll go ahead and put the other sleeve in here. So I'm going to hold it closer and show you the pictures. And these are some scenes from the movie. It's their wedding right there. It's John Travolta dancing. Just some different shots from the movie. And then the same thing on this side. Let's see. It's John Travolta. Four pictures on each side. And yeah. So I'm not going to spoil anything for those of you who haven't watched this. Maybe um, are planning on watching this after you watch this, maybe, or sometime. But I will tell you that this movie has a happy ending. Okay? So, I think we all like movies with happy endings. I know I do. So, there's the first one. I found this one and I found this next one both at uh, a record shop in town and I didn't find them on the same day. Um, I actually didn't know there was a part two until I found it. I was like, well, wow, that's pretty cool. Um, this one's really neat. I like the picture on this one more just because I think it, well, I mean, they're both pretty cool. I like them both, but I like this one especially because it has them both dancing together and it kind of gives you a f more of a feel for the movie. So, up at the top it says the Bayou City Beats, the Charlie Daniels Band, Mickey Gilly, Johnny Lee, and J.D. Souther. Or Souther. I think it's J.D. Souther. Oh my gosh. Okay, or 
Urban Cowboy 2. Urban Cowboy 2. And then it says, more music from the original motion picture soundtrack. And then it shows them dancing right there. A big old picture in the middle, just of them dancing. And this one does not open up. Um, but it does tell the songs here on the back, so we'll go ahead and read those to you. So, it says, More music from the original motion picture soundtrack from the Paramount picture starring John Travolta in Irving Cowboy. In Irving Azoff and Robert Evans production, a James Bridges film. Screenplay by James Bridges and Aaron Latham. Produced by Irving Azoff and Robert Evans, directed by James Bridges. So let's see. The Charlie Daniels Band, Texas. Uh, Mickey Gilly and Johnny Lee, Mamas Don't Let Your Babies Grow Up to Be Cowboys. Um, the Bayou City Beats, Cotton Eye Joe. Mickey Gilly, Honky Tonk Wine. Okay. J.D. Souther, The Moon Just Turned Blue. Mickey Gilly, Rockin' My Life Away. Mickey Gilly Jukebox Argument, and the Charlie Daniels Band Orange Blossom Special. So let me just, let me just see. So, it's pretty cool. And the year on this as well was 1980, um, but then there's a couple more years on it, 1975 and 1979. So maybe they have some songs on this album from those years. So, pretty cool. And the sleeve on this one is just a plain, a plain sleeve. Also, I apologize if it's getting a little dark. Um, I'm filming this in the evening time and the sun is just going down, but I don't know. I like darker videos. I don't I think they're It's also been very rainy and cloudy out all day, so it's not like super bright anyways. Um, but it's nice because it's like all the cool air from the rain and it's just, it's beautiful. It's refreshing. I love the rain. So, I will definitely include my favorite songs in the that want to check out some new music. Okay. Now, I did save some um, different facts about this movie on my phone, so I'm going to read those to you. Okay. Let's see. Okay. So, this was a PG film, and it was from 1980, and the category of this film was drama slash romance. And it's 2 hours and 15 minutes long. It's a pretty long movie. Um, I think the average movie is about an hour and 20 to an hour and 40 minutes. I'm not just saying that. Like, that's what I think. But, you know. So it's, it's quite a long movie. Um, let's see. It's rated a 6.3 out of 10 on IMDb. 67% Rotten Tomatoes. And 89% of people like this movie on Google. That's just, that's just on Google, the people that have, you know, voted in or whatever. Okay, now here's a little summary of the movie, the little description. After moving to Pasadena, Texas, country boy Bud Davis, which is John Travolta, um, starts hanging around a bar called Gillies, where he falls in love with a sissy, which is played by Deborah Winger a cowgirl who believes the sexes are equal. They eventually marry, but their relationship is turbulent due to Bud's traditional view of gender roles. Jealousy over his rival, Wes, Scott Glenn, leads to their separation, but Bud attempts to win Sissy back by triumphing at Gilly's mechanical bull riding competition. The release date is June 6th, 1980. 1980. So, um, 
that's just a small bit of like wrapping the movie up really quick um there's a lot more to the story and you know but i'm not gonna i'm not gonna say too much because i don't want to ruin it for anybody that hasn't seen it had a had a chance to watch it okay i'm gonna read um what i It says, we're sure you knew that Olivia Newton-John had a successful country music career, but did you realize that her Grease co-star, John Travolta, also played a huge role in shaping country music? While Travolta never became a country singer like Newton-John, he did star in a film that started a revolution in country music. That film was Urban Cowboy, which is cre- uh, credited for kickstarting the pop country movement that took place in the 1980s. Appropriately, that movement is often referred to as the Urban Cowboy Movement. Numerous songs on the soundtrack went on to become major hits, such as Johnny Lee's Looking for Love and Mickey Gillies' Stand By Me. You're probably listening to them today. Or you're probably still listening to them today. While you know that Urban Cowboy featured some incredible country music, we bet there's a few facts about the film that you don't have a clue about want to know what they are, then head down below to find out. Okay, so the first fact is the script was written with a different lead actor in mind. Although we can never imagine anyone else but John Travolta as Cowboy Bud Davis, the role wasn't meant for him. The script was originally written for a different actor in mind, Dennis Quaid. Which, if you don't know who Dennis Quaid is, he played the dad on Frequency, he played the dad on um, The Parent Trap, and he played on a ton of other movies, but those are the most uh, ones that I know him from. Like, the, the two movies that I know him most from. Um, so, they wanted Dennis Quaid to play his part, which I could I could see that. Um, okay, so, for whatever reason, Quaid was never cast in the role, and the part went to Travolta. But, Quaid managed to keep busy starring in Gorp and The Long Riders, which were released the same year as Urban Cowboy in 1980. Okay, so those are a couple more movies he was in that you might recognize him from. Okay, so the second fact was, uh, Loretta Lynn was considered for the female lead. No, it's not what you think. The real-life queen of country never auditioned to play Bud's love interest, Sissy in Urban Cowboy. But, Sissy Spacek, the actress who played Lynn in Michael Miner's daughter was one of the main actresses considered for the role. Okay, that would have been good. I, I could have seen that. I could have seen that. That's good. In the end, it was Deborah Winger who won the role as Sissy in the film. Spacek still got plenty of recognition in 1980, since that was the same year that Coal Miner's daughter debuted. She eventually won the Academy Award for Best Actress for her portrayal of Lynn. Okay, so... If you watched my Coal Miner's Daughter video, I talked about how, um, one of the facts I said about it was that Sissy Spacek kind of didn't know which movie to take that year. She had another movie that she could have played in, or she could have played in Coal Miner's Daughter. And she asked the universe to give her a sign, and she was listening to the radio one day in the car, and her and her husband heard the song Coal Miner's Daughter. So that's what made her go that route. But I bet this was the movie that she had to um, decide between, like, which one she was going to play. I'm so glad that she went with Gold Miner's Daughter, honestly. Because I think Deborah Winger did an awesome job at this movie. Okay, so the third uh, fact. Both leads had disco expertise. The 1970s were all about disco movies. Travolta starred in one of the most well-known disco flicks of all time, 1977 Saturday Night Fever. But it turns out that his co-star also had disco movie experience. While you likely knew about Travolta's role in Saturday Night Fever, we bet you didn't know about Winger's part in another disco movie. She discoed her way through the 1978 film Thank God It's Friday. Notice something else? Both Travolta and Winger's uh, respected films were named after the day of the week. Ah, oh, that's cool. Um, and it's cool that I've done, like, they're all a part of this soundtrack season, so that's really cool. Okay, the fourth uh, fact is the plot. 
plot is based on a real-life love story. A large portion of the film takes place at a honky-tonk named Gillies. Turns out that Gillies was a real-life bar in Pasadena, Texas with a real-life romance that ended up inspiring the film. Um, the plot of Urban Cowboy is based slightly on the relationship between a man named Donald Dew Westbrook and Betty Jo Helmer. The two met at the real Gillies bar and when they were 18 and married within months. They even had their wedding reception at Gillies. Sadly, the couple had separated by the time Urban Cowboy started filming. They eventually divorced. That is the saddest thing I've heard today. At least Bud and Sissy had a happy ending. That's what I said. The movie has a really good ending. Okay, so we have a couple more facts here. This one says teens didn't flock to see the film. Thanks to Saturday Night Fever and Grease, Travolta was one of the biggest movie stars at the time that Urban Cowboy was released. You would think that his star power would have sent teens flocking to see Urban Cowboy, but that's not what happened. Although Urban Cowboy went on to make a modest showing at the box office, it was a big, it was a bit of a flop at the start. Since the box office data was so low, a newspaper poll was taken to find out why teens didn't seem interested in the film. So, what was one of the main things that kept teens away from the theaters? They didn't have any idea what the word urban meant. Despite teens' initial lack of enthusiasm about the film, it went on to gross nearly $47 million. Aww. Well, darn. But hey, I think the movie stood the test of time, and I love it, so. Okay. The last fact, which I think is one of my favorite facts besides the whole Loretta Lynn thing, um, it says Patrick Swayze taught Travolta how to dance. Seven years after the release of Urban Cowboy, Patrick Swayze would star in one of the most beloved films of all time, Dirty Dancing. But back in the 1980s, he was fresh off his debut role, a movie role in the roller disco flick, Skate Town, USA. Swayze was only 28 years old when they were working on Urban Cowboy. Even at that early point in his career, his talent as a dancer was something no one could ignore, including Travolta. Even though Travolta had shown off plenty of dance moves in Greece and Saturday Night Fever, he needed someone to teach him how to two-step. Swayze was that someone. Urban Cowboy also marked the film's uh, choreography debut of Swayze's mother, Patsy Swayze. That's a cool name, Patsy Swayze. Who went on to uh, choreograph other films such as Hope Floats and Liar's Moon. So, that is all of the facts that I have for today's soundtracks. I hope you enjoyed this episode, and I will be back.